quick question before we get started with the show. Do you order lab tests from companies like Dutch, DSL, Genova, or Vibrant America? Hi, I'm Dr. Carrie Jones, Head of Medical Education at Rupa Health, the absolute best place to order, manage, track, and get results from 30 plus lab companies all in one place. Practitioners using Rupa Health are saving well over 15 hours of admin time each week for their lab ordering process. With just a few clicks, you can order from 30 plus lab companies, that's over 3,000 tests for free in one single portal. That means one invoice for all labs paid online up front. Plus, patients get practitioner pricing and receive full patient support through easier personalized collection instructions, automated follow-ups, super bills, answers to testing questions, and so much more. Go to rupahealth.com to sign up for your free account today. Now, let's start the show. Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Our host for Redefining Medicine is Dr. Erica Schwartz. For more than 20 years, Dr. Erica has been at the forefront of advanced patient care, taking the best from conventional and integrative medicine and applying them to prevent disease. Dr. Erica is a distinguished AFRM faculty member in disciplines ranging from hormone therapy, peptide therapy, and IV nutritional support. Welcome to Redefining Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Erica Schwartz. In this podcast, what we do is bring in the innovators the visionaries, those who are there to change healthcare forever, for the better. And today, I have the ultimate in that field. Dr. Hertog. Thank you, Erika. You've been with A4M for a long time. Today, you said you wanted to talk about something else you want to introduce into every doctor because they have it in them. Yes. So tell us about it. Well, I think uh, medicine is going to dramatically change, dramatically. And this time is not with technology, it is with spirituality. I believe that every doctor, every doctor who devotes his life to medicine is actually what you can call a shaman. Somebody can communicate with the spiritual world, with the, the energy that is around us. And um, I, I think uh, when we do that, I do it in my consultations now more and more, uh, the people are excited. Patients, um, they go to a doctor not only for a physical reason or a psychological reason, but they want to have something more. They want to be in the essential in their life. And doctors have this gift of being more able than others to put these patients in contact with their higher self or the spiritual world or what is really important for them. Actually be healers. Be healers. Because prevention goes hand in hand with healing, right? Yeah. And the interesting thing is, you're not gonna learn that in medical school. That's not something that conventional medical training is gonna give us, is it? No, but um, anyway, since the COVID uh, period is passing now, people have changed. I, I think you feel it yourself. Yes. People are different, and physicians also. And uh, we can now openly talk about spirituality. It doesn't seems stupid or whatever. No, it seems that it's very f interesting and fascinating. And I get many patients now that are off, out of my office that are absolutely enthusiastic of it. And I think that is what f physicians have to do, is um, bring the essential back to a patient so that the patient cures by having this contact with spirituality. It's a real healing energy that it makes life is so more, more, much more worthwhile. Do you think you find in Europe better response to it than you think you find here? No, I think that everywhere now, wherever I go, I went to Poland, I went to Spain. Well, that's Europe. I'm now in, that's in Brazil. <laughs> I'm, I'm going here in, in the US. Um, the US. Uh -huh. uh, I, I can talk with many people and they are surprised and then they tell their story they never dare to tell. So I think uh, tongues are getting loose and we're, um, um, there to experience uh, something beautiful is that we can share now 
our spirituality with others. I think what you're saying is really true. I find that I'm a clinician and I practice in New York City and I find the same thing. People always want to talk about the healing power of the doctor. They want their doctor to heal them. They want to feel better when they leave the doctor's office. They want to feel like they connected. And I think that that is something that we were never taught. And once you experience it, you can't go back. No, and you have it in yourself. Everybody has it, not only doctors. But doctors have maybe a gift more, I would say. And they're able to connect the mm -hmm. patient with this uh, spiritual world that is not only around us, but in us. And that makes it really exciting. That's wonderful. And you know, we refer and recommend all these apps that have meditation and that have breathing exercises. And people are taking them and actually doing them. But let me go for one second, digress and go to what you're famous for, which is hormones. And We've both been practicing hormone medicine for as long. Only you're four generations in. I'm the first generation, actually the second generation in my family. But talk to me about how you've changed your practice of hormone medicine, bioidentical hormones. How have you changed it as you've grown to become a 360 degree physician? Yes, well, the hormones remain extremely important. And I, I can say that I, it's like uh, I'm going deeper into mm -hmm. the hormone therapies. I'm using them as tools. Uh, um, what hormones do on spiritual level, for example, is that they make you so much better that you are not handicapped by parasitic emotions. So you don't see complications everywhere, you see solutions everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so they actually pat the way for us to accomplish our destiny because I really believe that we're here of with a mission or with a special way, which is actually being ourselves. It's not more doing all the time. It's not accumulating a palmarist and things like that. If you die and you go in the other world, you're not going to bring your accomplishments, <laughs> but you're going to bring your being. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I think uh, hormones permit you to be yourself more. You don't need to do things. You be yourself, you can shine like you are, and that's exactly this healing power of the physician is it's, it's himself. Being himself becomes the healing power. Uh, and when you're self, you're, you're not anymore your personality, which is an adaptation to the, the world or ego that is sometimes, you, you become your, what you are, your, your soul. And, and that makes it exciting. And you have done a soul to soul talk with your patient. And that be, starts the healing process. But not everybody's as evolved as you, you know that. The group here, A4M, is at the forefront of it. But our podcast listeners and viewers probably want to understand a little bit more about the role of where do you put hormones in this whole thing? Where do you put the balance of hormones? And as you said, which was really important, about how by being imbalanced hormonally, you don't have this reactionary emotions that are, as you said, that they're parasitic emotions. Um, but how do you treat the patient? Do you treat them differently as far as hormone therapies, treatments? Do you still start the same way you used to? I still start the same way mm -hmm. and I end by adding something like how important it is to also uh, progress spiritually. And so what I basically do when a patient comes is that the patient has already done a big part of the job before. The patient has done lab tests before, mm -hmm. the, uh, which are very helpful. Uh, the patient has filled up a questionnaire, so we know all the complaints, and it's also um, uh, ordered per hormone deficiency. And there are more than 12 hormone deficiencies that we screen, plus the foods, because we pay a lot of attention to food, and some nutritional supplements. So by the complaints, we know a lot. And then we, the patient comes, we discuss that. We do a physical examination. It's really tough. It takes at least 15 minutes normally, and uh, where we take much more than the weight and the blood pressure. We look at every part of the body: the hair, the skin, the tongue, uh, the, the the belly, uh, and the feet, so that we have a good idea how intense there are hormone or nutritional deficiencies on the patient or excesses, because that happens also. And um, and then uh, we we provide a treatment that is often multiple. It's not just one miracle hormone or one miracle nutrient. Now we give everything that the patient is deficient in and that makes that the patient feels so much better because it's not only that every separate nutrient or every separate hormone 
gifts actually um, a benefit, but when you add them together, there's a sort of synergy. One plus one is three, and one plus one plus one is not three, but six. It, it is amplifying the effects and make it also much more safer. So it's safer because the, the patient reacts better to treatment because everything is in balance. So the balance between hormones, nutrients, and the food, and the good reactions is very important. What about sleep and exercise? Sleep and exercise, very important. Um, I gave a, just gave a workshop on longevity where we show all the aspects uh, you need to do in, in exercise, but not too vigorous, not too light. Mm -hmm. So it's a middle way. It's like walking uh, three mile, two miles a day. That's equivalent of that is daily is very good. Uh, you need to sleep enough. Um, uh, centenarians sleep on the average eight hours and they have a good restorative sleep. Centenarians, people who have shown the path that they can live long and healthy, actually are good sleepers. They're not bad sleepers because sleeping pills from those artificial, the um, studies, some studies have shown an increase in mortality that is impressive. I don't even mm -hmm. dare to say how much. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, if you sleep good with melatonin, with precursors of melatonin like 5 hydroxytryptophan taken at bedtime or GABA, you, and, and with growth hormone and with melatonin, you sleep, have a much better sleep, and that makes really a difference. Do you believe that people should live, can live 120 years with good quality, great health span? Yes, yes I believe we, we can, and we already have the information to do so. Uh, and even if you start late, you're uh, 55, 60, 65 years, it's not too late. You can do a lot and make a big difference, especially in those years after age 50, that the more, more you do, the better it is. Um, so, but if you start very early, it's even better. Huh? Mm -hmm. So prevention, I think, should always be forward. And it's true, people don't say they don't have the time, but you have the time. There's one important person in your life, one very mm -hmm. important, that's yourself. So if you have the king or the queen coming in your place or the president, you're going to put a red carpet. So why not do it for yourself <laughs> and, true. and take good care of yourself? True. 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 I don't think people realize that it's never too early to start. And the earlier you start, the better, the it, better is. it is. Let me ask you something else. Do you start people on hormones in ten, after 10 years out of menopause, like let's say in their 60s and 70s? No, is, no. That, uh, I start much earlier. Well, but if they show up. If they say. show up, yes, of course I put uh, female hormones. Without any doubt, if you're even 100 years old, I would <laughs> also put you on 100 uh, on hormones. But of course, there's a certain adaptation. If there's a little bit too much aging, you have to go slower. You have to right. always treat with tenderness, mm -hmm. and, and that I, but not insufficient treatment. That is also not good. So mm -hmm. not too low dose, not too high, but it has to be personalized treatment for Correct. to work well. I agree with you 100%. What else do you want to tell us? Well, What's going on in Europe that we should know? Because, you know, things don't cross the Atlantic very well as far as medicine is concerned. I remember in 2011 being in uh, Rome at the International Menopause Society and them talking about estrogens being, there's no class effect, meaning not all estrogens are created equal. And coming here, and the only thing you heard was it's all estrogens are the same. Birth control pills, bioidentical hormones, doesn't matter, all the same. It's still questionable. There are doctors who still don't know that every estrogen behaves differently. But it's starting to move. Now, as such, I still go back to 2011 and I'm wondering uh, what's in Europe that hasn't crossed the Atlantic yet? I'm not sure. I know exactly what has not crossed. I think um, um, there's also a difference in Europe. Europe is, is, is like multiple continents. Mm -hmm. And so it, there's another way in the Netherlands, then in France, etc. And there is in Europe a lot of restrictive countries, not because it's really restricted, because physicians are afraid. So uh, the guts. Uh, I can tell of Belgium, I can do almost anything in Belgium, and Belgium is a very restrictive country, but we did have to put borders. We have to sue 
uh, medical boards or sue the government for a law that was passed that was against hormones. And by winning those processes one after the other, we created a space in Europe where we can treat. So in Europe, there's, uh, in Belgium, there's more freedom than in most countries to treat, although we, of course, will do it always safely and, and rarely. Um, what may not have totally uh, crossed here in Europe is already what I started many years ago, is to treat female hormone deficiency from age 25 or 30 on with estrogens, not only with progesterone. Uh, studies have shown that from age 30 on, you lower your levels, for example, of female hormones, and actually you need your female hormones. When a woman is pregnant, for example, after, she looks like a mother. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between a mother and the lady <laughs> before is she's older, she has less hormones. So I provide then the hormones after to such a woman, and she looks again youthful as was before. She has energy again, and she feels good. And there's not more cancer. There's more cancer protective when it's well done, very good balance. Agreed. I practice the same kind of medicine. And you know what? Basically, what you're saying is estrogens are key. And you have to remember that it's never too early. Thank you so much, Dr. Hertog. It's a pleasure and keep on telling us what to do. Thank you, thank you, Erika. <laughs>